Hi everyone, today we want to talk about uh, Trump's first 100 days. Uh, we looked at how he did on social. Uh, we've been following uh, President Trump, uh, first as candidate Trump, all throughout the election process. And then, of course, now we've been following to see how he's done on social uh, since Inauguration Day. I'm joined by Jim Anderson via Skype. Uh, Jim, thanks for joining us from Chicago. Um, the thing, Jim, well, first of all, talk a little bit about what, what, what we looked at in order to get this new data on Trump's uh, first 100 days. Well, you know, social flow, we power much of the world's media content that goes out to social networks. The, the top 150 media companies use social flow uh, to get uh, much of their content out to Facebook and Twitter. And so that gives us a wonderful opportunity to sort of listen in on what's going on and see what people are interacting with. Uh, most recently to see, you know, sort of what's going on in the first hundred days, we saw some really, really interesting results. Okay. So um, before you give me, I, I know we were, we, we expected things like terrorism, war, um, uh, Flynn, Russia, we expected all these things to sort of be key, if you like, or, or sort of rise to the top of those. We, we looked at the top 500 uh, most consumed, engaged with articles and uh, talked a little bit about what we found. It wasn't those at all. It was instead... Yeah, so it was interesting. Immigration is obviously a big issue. I mean, that, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. That was one of the key planks that, that Donald Trump used to win the presidency. So clearly, Americans are concerned about the topic of immigration. And that doesn't mean that they're all necessarily in agreement with Trump. There have been a lot of quite controversial executive orders and actions and court battles on and around the topic of immigration. So it is, it's very, uh, it generates a lot of emotion, a lot of passion, and a lot of interest. So that, that's clearly one of the key things. But the thing that was surprising and in, in many ways quite gratifying was was the, you remember the brief dust up over the coverage of Barron Trump, where he got sort of pulled into it, Donald Trump's son, who's yeah. I believe 10 years old. That saw a really, really strong reaction that was almost completely independent of your political affiliation, whether you lean left or you lean right, or you're somewhere in between. I think it, this child should be off limits. That's not somebody who needs to be drawn into this. And in an era where I think a lot of us are are sort of worried about degrading, you know, norms and, and you know, the, the polarization and the contention that happens in our political uh, conversations, in some ways, it's, it's quite gratifying to see that there are common standards of, of decency, if you will, to say, hey, let's let's keep this child out of it. I mean, we can disagree all we want to, but let's not make it about somebody's child. That's really off limits. Right. And, and I was surprised to see that. And I think that was I think that pretty much occupied the same perch as immigration. Um, one thing that another thing that a uh, little bit surprising to me that was right up there, first of all, just to reiterate, I think um, James Comey, who's often it depends on which way you lean. He's off, either way you lean, he's, he's talked about as having a huge impact on the election or, or a big impact on the election. Um, and there's a lot of disagreement as to who he helped or hurt. But one thing that was surprising was he, he only came up once in the top 500. Um, that surprised me. But then another one um, was how much satire. Satire was, I think, the third, the third biggest topic or the third most consumed uh, part of media. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, satire is one of the original forms of political criticism, right? And and you know, it's uh, it's really in some ways humor and satire specifically is a way to take a little bit of safe refuge in in uh, putting some fairly pointed criticism out there. Is you know, you can do it under the umbrella of satire. Uh, and so I think you know, it's not surprisingly. Again, we know that that the whole election and Donald Trump's win uh, was very polarizing. So it's not surprising at all to see quite a bit of satire getting quite a bit of coverage. And the other interesting thing I see. About about that, I, when you say satire, I tend to think of the late night hosts. Uh, but it's funny, They're, they are, they may host and they may do things late night, but that's not how most of their content is consumed, right? right. Most people actually see those clips in their Facebook or Twitter feeds probably the next day rather well, than at 11.30 p.m. So on I broadcast have a, TV. I have a stat to add on that, which is, um, and, it, it, and it totally typ typifies your point, which is satire was the second most retweeted, which makes sense because we, a lot of people retweet clips, articles, you know, that, that's how they, they, they share it with their friends. And it was the third most engaged um, topic or, you know, segment of, uh, of all things we looked at. Um, yeah. One Thank other you. thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, we, we, we also looked at comparing Trump's uh, first 100 days in office, obviously, with his 100 days as candidate. Um, that he seemed to hold up pretty well in terms of engagement and reach. Um, and we had seen uh, through past searches that he did seem to drop off a little bit towards sort of the, the last few weeks of um, of the campaign. And we wondered if that was because Hillary was getting better or, if, or uh, and we know she changed her sort of her social media team. But we also wondered if perhaps like some of the things that caught your attention or one's attention on social media 
you, people might be getting a little anesthetized to it. Um, and then we, you know, we of course then wondered what would, what would happen once you know he has the presidential seal behind him. Um, were you surprised that things seem to seem to? I mean, it's almost like I think his reach improved. Were you surprised that that, that all things seem to sort of stay stay equal? I mean, it's almost like get a little bit of a, a little bit of a presidential bump in terms of his points. I'm not really that surprised because, and you just you just said it. He's president after all. Right. I mean, what what he say matters. Uh, what he says matters in a way that it didn't necessarily matter. You know, as a candidate, you could at least attribute it to, oh, he's just, you know, he's, it's bluster and he's just trying to get attention, which is, it may very well have been true. He was trying to get attention. He succeeded in doing that. But now uh, it, it's when a, when the president of the United States says something, it may still be bluster, but it matters in a way that no candidate, even a quite successful candidate's comments matter. So in, in that regard, I'm not really that surprised because, you know, there, there's a level of consequence uh, that goes along with what he says, or at least implied consequence. Now, now that he's president, uh, that uh, I, I, you, you said it perfectly <laughs> as, you, as, you, as usual. All right, I think you have to scoot. I know you're in Chicago. Um, thanks very much for joining us, and uh, thanks for sort of highlighting uh, the good data that we just we just uh, compiled. Sounds great. Thank you.